Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 6, 5 through 9. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into the room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our time is short this morning, and I am happy for that because I know that Tessa is the main attraction today. How many of you have gone back to school? How many of you are taking people back to school? How many of you are in a new routine that has something to do with the fact that the school year has begun? Jason, man, you didn't raise your hand. Because you're always doing that, right? Yeah, Jason's always at school in providing a situation for people at COCC. Just big shout out to COC. They are awesome. Everyone's going back to school. Going back to a routine. Routine is something that is comfortable. Routine is something that helps us know whether or not we have gotten certain things done. I went to school this week. I went to G-A-E, Glendale Adventist Elementary School, and I was invited there to speak for just a few minutes to the junior high kids. It was interesting because in the junior high section of this school, there are many students from China, and they involve them in the religious programming of the school, even though... I believe that most, if not all of them, are not Christian. Some of them do not yet speak very much English either. So it was quite a challenge for me to come into that situation and see a bunch of kids sitting on either side that come from a variety of ethnic backgrounds and then right smack dab in the middle, I was in the amphitheater, by the way, if you've ever been to the amphitheater at GAA. Glendale Adventist Academy, was this huge group of Chinese. It was a wonderful challenge, to say the least, and I suddenly realized that these young people coming from Adventist backgrounds now thrown together in an Adventist school with kids who, A, don't speak English, B, come from a culture around the other side of the globe, and C, uh, don't know who Jesus is. And here they are uh, together in class, sometimes in class together, sometimes in their separate classes, because this is a big program at GAE and GAA to have these individuals come over and to learn English, but in the process also potentially learn about Jesus. So it was interesting to me uh, that they chose songs like, We are soldiers in the ark. And suddenly I realized... Is that really what we wanted to tell these kids who may not know who Jesus is and really don't know us either? So as I'm going back to school this week, I'm also thinking about what it is that, that we do as a congregation, what it is that, who, who it is that we are in the midst of this town that we live in. Today, in, in the few short minutes that I'm going to take, I, I want us to concentrate on the first few words of the Lord's Prayer. Something that we just say. You know, uh, if, if you come from a Catholic background, you know that it's actually a penance that you can be given. If you want to be forgiven for your sin, you have to say so many Hail Marys and so many Our Fathers. I'm so sorry that it's used almost as a punishment because it was never meant that way. It was Jesus being asked by his, his, his disciples, being asked to 
to teach them as their rabbi, teach them how to think, how to, to express themselves in the situation. And so the very first words that he uses are, our father. And for sake of time, I'm just going to tell you the main point, and here it is. Our father refers to the leader of the house, the person who sets the routine, the person who is responsible for the household. This is how we are to think of our heavenly father. Now, understand, too, that can contained in that word father is also mother. So our heavenly parent, our heavenly leader of the household. So as leaders of the household, which I'm going to say that most of the people I'm talking to today are leaders of a household, as leaders of the household, you can understand that this is, this is something that pertains to us. We as the children of the father, mother, the children in this family need to recognize who is in charge. Who is in charge? Who is the one who sets the agenda? Who is the one who sets the routine? Now, uh, David talks a lot about the stars and the moon and the sun and, and the, the beauty around us. We know this in the Psalms. We know this because he is recognizing the creator God as the one who has not only created this, but then set it all in order. You have noticed maybe, um, if you have been here several weeks, that often part of the way that I pray these days reflects a new understanding maybe for me. I don't know why it's taken me so long to come to this but a realization that because I go a different way than maybe God has outlined for me in the week does not mean that God has kicked me out of the family. So if you came here thinking, I'm going to go to church today because I need to get back to God because you know I'm not sure he wants me in the family because of all the stuff that I've done on my own this week, please understand that that, that attitude towards God is, is not found in Scripture because He loves us. He has decided to redeem us and He wants to spend time with us. And I'm going to thank you on behalf of God for deciding to get together to support your brothers and sisters on a Sabbath morning and come to church. It's an action that happens because you are in a routine you come here because you want to meet with others who are saying to God, God, maybe this week I didn't do everything that you wanted me to do on your list. And I didn't do it the way that you wanted me to do it. And maybe there were some people that were affected negatively and, and, and their opinion of you was hurt by what I did. Please, please forgive me for letting down the side. Please forgive me for maybe causing people to not see you the way that you need to be seen. This is my new understanding of sin. Sin is those things that we choose to do. And so we come, uh, we, we come at a moment like this and we say, our Father, the one who is in charge, the one who sets the routine." Hallowed be your name. Now this name thing comes up again in the third commandment. Uh, some of you were raised like this. I know that my mom and dad raised me like this. You know that you should not take the Lord's name in vain. So when you heard people saying, you know, Jesus Christ, you, know, you got all upset. And when I was younger, I liked to poke fun at people a little bit. I do it less now because there's so much of this worry that people might get mad at you. You know, I used to say when people would say, oh God, I'd say, yeah, he, he's listening. <laughs> because so many of our compatriots just use the name of God in an, in an expletive, that's the proper term for it, 
You know, those naughty words that we say that they, they come out of our mouths in, in ways that are sometimes rather satisfying. You know, you say that word and it's like you've expressed some of your anger and your upsetness. And to use the name of God in that way, it, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Really. The longer you think about who you're talking about and whose name you're, you're just using like a, a common swear word. But you see, that's, that's only a part. That's only a small part. The bigger part is that it's the family name. So here today we had family. And today we have family in the church. And so when we say our father, the one who is in charge of setting the stars in place and keeping them orbiting exactly how they should and is the one whose name we have taken by choice, then this bigger idea begins to blossom in your mind, I hope. It certainly has in my mind that I am called by his name. In fact, the name also means household, like the first part of, of, of this couplet. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The name has to do with his territory, his, his huge kingdom, and the fact that we are part of that, that we've chosen to be part of that, means that we come in, in a worshipful way a worshipful manner. And that's not just something that we do by coming to church. It's something that we do by what we think concerning the hurricane that's happening in Florida or uh, whether or not we are happy with, with uh, uh, the way that H&M makes clothing in India or Pakistan. Uh, you know, this world is my father's world and we are called by the father's name And so when we pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be, holy is your name, is your family. We, we better be sure that we believe that. I watched a video with, with a friend of mine yesterday that, that basically said, are, are you sure, are you sure that you trust God enough to obey him? Those are, those are big words. Trust and obedience, o obey. Our Father, which art in heaven, his domain is everywhere. We recognize that and call his name holy. And we ask to be called by that name as well when we ask for membership in that family. What's in a name? Well, uh, a name has to do with, with reputation, and reputation has to do with who we are and, 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 and what we become. The world, I'm going to tell you, the, the world in which we live today has many, many different ways of measuring whether or not you are worthy to be part of the society you wish to be part of. Part of my uh, research this week took me to Barnes & Noble. I know I should probably look online because it's cheaper. Her name is Serena Williams. And she's on the front cover of Inc. Forbes magazine. I've got Inc. right here. Forbes magazine because she is listed now as the richest self-made woman. Uh, on the Inc. Inc. magazine, Incorporated magazine, has the 500 list. I'm sure there are companies that look to see where they get ranked. But the magazine that I chose not to buy because it was so expensive, oh my goodness, almost 20 bucks, was Worth. Worth magazine. <laughs> That's the name of the magazine, Worth. And it's all about investments and finance. 
I'm sure, I'm sure that there are some people in this congregation that know exactly the magazine I'm talking about because it has the worth, the worth 100 in it. It's a very interesting article at the beginning of the magazine that says, you know what, today's way of deciding who is most powerful is way different than it was back in the days of Rockefeller and Ford and other famous American business people who started something and then grew it into some big company. It's way different today. Just understand that it's well worth reading from this perspective, and this is the reason why I think it's important, is that there is a different way of measuring your worth to God than there is in the economy and in the world that we live in today. Please understand that as you leave today, you are part of a family. The name that is God's name, you are part of a family that values you because you are his creature. You were made by him. Look at this beautiful baby we dedicated back to him today. Tessa. Tessa Caitlin. She is an example of the, the miracle of life from the life giver. She hasn't, we would say, she hasn't done anything in this world yet. She is still just a baby learning to walk. But yet, she is loved and valued by God. Because he made her. He, he performed the miracle of life inside of Ronell, who herself was a miracle to have survived the birthing process. Our Father, which art in heaven, which includes earth, hallowed be your name. We're going to continue on next week. We have the opportunity to look at this prayer over the next few weeks. I'm going to ask that you do your own study and reflection under the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And if you have some great insight that you just know you have never had before, text me, call me, email me, say, look, this is what God is showing me about this particular text. Because my friends, it's revolutionary. Jesus was revolutionary, and this is his manifesto. By the way, it's found in Matthew chapter 6. You know, five, 4, 5, and 6, Matthew 4, 5, and 6. This is what we call the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus' manifesto. And who is Jesus? We believe he's God. God come to earth to tell us about himself and to tell us how he would like to have us back home with him face to face. As Adventists, that's what we look forward to. Amen.